Today, on this windy, windy day, we are trying out the uh, Pocket Packet application for the iPhone. We're going to do uh, APRS, we're going to do APRS mapping, and we're going to do APRS messaging using uh, yeah, the Pocket Packet application on the iPhone and the Kenwood THD75 radio. So, stick around and see how it turns out. To start off, you need to make sure that uh, Bluetooth is uh, enabled on the uh, Kenwood. You do that by going into the, the gear icon for configuration and you find your way down to Bluetooth and uh, make sure that Bluetooth is turned on like it is here. Uh, we're going back out of that one and uh, let's see. Next, we need to make sure that the TNC is uh, activated. You do that by pressing the function key and the APRS button. And uh, that toggles between no uh, KISS and uh, APRS and uh, KISS. So the first thing you activate then is the APRS function. So we'll press the function button and the APRS button, which is uh, number five again. And you can see now we have uh, KISS 12 showing in the display. And the 12 there is for 1200 watt. We're doing 1200 watt today. Uh, next thing to do, let's see. Next thing to do is to make sure to put this uh, BV link thing in your iPhone. You need that to translate between the uh, traditional Bluetooth uh, in uh, the uh, Kenwood and uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, which is in the iPhone. Next up, we start the uh, Pocket Packet application, and we need to make sure we are connected to the uh, Kenwood. Let's uh, see, we'll do that under Bluetooth TNC. See, we already have the BB link uh, configured and uh, we will just enable the uh, TNC. And now we should be able to look at the packet flow and already we can see we've received one uh, packet. So the cool thing now is that now we are able to uh, do such things as uh, send messages and we can also watch the map here as uh, objects and uh, people and uh, repeaters and uh, uh, lots of interesting things this uh, appears on the map around us we can see already we have one um, thing appearing on the map lima alpha one echo november alpha we can have a look at uh, where he is we get the uh, latitude and longitude of uh, his uh, location um, apparently he's uh, stationary but you still get the course and the speed and uh, of course the altitude and uh, you can uh, look him up on uh, qrz which i think is uh, kind of cool uh, wasn't uh, there we have him there and uh, let's see back to uh, the application i can also send him a message but let's uh let's not do that because i <laughs> i don't think i know him and we see now uh, there are other things appearing on uh, the map let's have a look see what this is that's uh lima delta 3 juliet sierra i think that's an aprs uh, fill-in let's uh, have a look yeah, it's probably not going to have a QRZ page. We can have a look at the package we received. Yeah, use tape. That's uh, one of the locations where my local group has uh, APRS uh, digipeters. Um, so let's uh, have a look and see if uh, while the map is uh, populating, uh, we are yeah, slowly getting some uh, more objects on the map here. But while the map is uh, populating, we can uh, try and send a message. Uh, let's see, and uh, I can try and send a, uh, a message to my uh, my computer's home, which is uh, connected uh, as uh, Lima Bravo Five Juliet Juliet running the uh, Pinpoint APRS application. It's connected uh, over RF, so if I reach a, uh, a repeater, a digipeater from here, then I should be able to send a message to that one, and I should also get an automatic reply. Uh, let's see. All right. You there, question mark. That's it. And uh, we can, yeah, I'm not sure that's going to give us an acknowledgement, so I will not request an act. I'll just try and send that message, see what happens. Will you look at that? See, the, <laughs> one of the problems with uh, this application is that it uh, does not do uh, duplicate checking. So basically, you, know, you see now four messages that I got back from uh, from my computer at home, and uh, they took uh, different parts to get here, and uh, I picked up all of them, and uh, the application is showing all of them. Uh, fairly simple duplicate checking would uh, be able to eliminate uh, this thing in the user interface, but uh, hey, 
what can you do uh can, let's see if we can see no we can't see in there but maybe if we go into the bluetooth tnc and the packet flow we can look at the different uh, parts that's stuck together this uh came in over tcp ip and uh lima delta 3 hotel victor uh this came via my uh digipeter at home lima bravo 5 juliet juliet dash 14. this came via the uh the local uh groups uh digipeter which is lima delta 3 tango bravo and we got one coming in over tcp ip and my local repeater at home and uh, it seems i uh, i can hear my home station directly over rf as well so uh, great many ways of uh, reaching my station at home this is uh, it's rather impressive because it's uh, it's not really that close. Now, now that that's uh, been going on for a bit, let's have a look at the map and see what else we can see. Uh, this is one of the big advantages of using a cell phone uh, as opposed to just using the interface on the phone. So you can uh, we can have a look here. You see our position, and we can zoom in and see what's uh, nearby. That should, this should be my should be my home station, I think. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, yeah, as I said, you can. Uh, you press the little I and you can get more information. Uh, latitude, longitude, uh, height about sea level, and uh, you can do a search on uh, on the QR set to uh, get more information on uh, on the station. Let's see if there are any other stations that uh, has been picked up. Um, we uh, should be able to see at least. Uh, some other digipeters. Yeah, it's the Drummond digipeter. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, here we go. That's a new one. All the way into Oslo. That's uh, about 80 kilometers uh, line of sight uh, or straight uh, distance. Lima Alpha 6, Papa Bravo Alpha. Let's have a little look. Lars, it says. Let's look him up on uh, QRZ. Yep. Yeah. There we go. We get his address and uh, everything. Not a lot of info on this page, but uh, that's right. I'm not quite sure if we heard uh, the uh, station in Oslo directly or not. And if we want to know that, we can go back into the uh, into the packet flow and have a look. And we will see that uh, yeah, he was uh, picked up first by the uh, by the um, local uh, digipeter in Oslo. And uh, then that got relayed to the local Digipeter down here in Tunsberg, and I heard it from that Digipeter. So, uh, yeah, that's the the beauty of APRS. It can uh, relay messages for for quite 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 a bit. One more thing to show you. I, I can see here we got a weather station, and uh, that's a Lima Alpha Nine Uniform Tango Alpha Dash Thirteen. Let's have a look at that. And you can see he's got a weather station, and uh, it's got a latitude and longitude, so you know where it's at. You've got the wind direction, wind speed, and then the wind speed in the gusts. You also get the temperature, and uh, seems to be a rain sensor and a humidity sensor and a pressure sensor as well. So fairly uh, comprehensive weather data from uh, Lima Alpha 9 Uniform Tango Alpha there. Let's look him up on uh, QRZ as well. So that's uh, Erlen Finn Stad uh, in Nittedal. That's a good ways away. So uh, before we Pack it up. Let's have a look and see how that uh, packet reached us. Once again, we do that by going into the Bluetooth TNC packet flow. And we have a look and see if we can find his uh, packet. And we see it right here. And uh, that took the same path as the Oslo station we just saw. It was relayed via the Digipeter in Oslo, Lima Delta 1 Oscar Echo, and uh, the lo local Digipeter down here in Tunsberg, Lima Delta 3 Tango Bravo. Um, yeah, so as uh, as you can see, quite quite a uh, ways away. I would guesstimate that to be about 100 kilometers uh, from here. So pretty amazing, I think that uh, that you can get all this information from uh, from all over. I see we have uh, one more uh, home station appearing down here, Lima Alpha Two Bravo Bravo Alpha. Let's have a look at him as well. And uh, that is uh, Jan Torp in uh, pretty close to the. Pretty close to the uh, Swedish border, actually. So very cool. Oh, to the map. So, as you can see, this gives you a very nice tactical overview of what's uh, going on around you in uh, in a amateur radio um, context. 
And uh, if you want to do this to get an, an operational overview in a, in a uh, let's say an emergency where people are uh, carrying uh, APRS trackers, it's it's fairly obvious that it's uh, this is going to be a very very useful tool for uh, for getting an overview of uh, what's going on. And the fact that you can do it on a cell phone, you don't need a uh, big computer that's uh, going to drain its battery in a in a matter of hours. I think that's a, a very useful feature of uh, APRS, very underused uh, feature. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it for now. That's how you do APRS with the Pocket Packet application on the iPhone and the Kenwood THD75. You can of course also use uh, other Bluetooth capable radios like the uh, Vero VRN76. Might do a video on that as well on uh, this uh, application, but uh, I think you'll agree that this is most useful and it makes uh, APRS a lot nicer than uh, trying to just use the really small screen on uh, on a handheld and uh, using uh, the keyboard for typing out the messages keyboard of course on the on the handheld so if you uh, like this sort of content and uh, want to see more of it i would encourage you to subscribe if you like this video in particular then please uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, if uh, you want to see something else uh, if you think i did something wrong Please leave a comment and uh, I'll try to address it either in the next video or in reply to the comment. I think that's about it. Till next time, 7-3.